the moment to act is now. And the question is not how can we reform the system, but how can we really transform it? Hello everyone, my name is Carola Rakete. I have become known as a captain. I have been working mainly in polar areas, um, seeing how the environment is suffering from the climate crisis. And I would like to tell you how these things are actually connected. So last year when uh, I suddenly became known to people just by coincidence, really, in June, I had been happily in Scotland planting pine tree seedlings when a friend of mine called me and said, well, we are going on the next rescue mission, supposedly next week, and all the crew is here, but the captain just stepped down because the political situation is quite difficult and wouldn't you want to join us? And I um, did think of my nice little trees, which I quite like, and Scotland, which is really lovely. And then I saw that what is going on on the border is quite outrageous and there are not a lot of people who are actually willing to risk what I would call white privilege. Uh, so I joined the vessel in beginning of June sometime. We directly went out to sea and on the third day we rescued 53 people from a rubber boat who had just fled from Libya. And we were told that we should bring them back to Tripoli, which, however, would be in non-compliance with the Geneva Convention on Refugee Rights. We were not assigned a part of safety to finish this rescue, because by the maritime law, a rescue ends once people are in a safe place. And by definition, that's not a ship that needs to be a port. So without getting official information, we went to the closest port, which was Lampedusa, an island of Italy, and we waited there for instruction. We started legal proceedings um, with Italy, with the EU human rights courts, and so on to be able to get access to the port. However, everything was denied. And after we had waited for a total of 17 days and the psychological situation of the people who we had rescued were, was very worrying, um, I decided to get the ship into the port without permission, which I did. So that means that in the end we had these 53 people um, safe in Italy, but I was arrested as a consequence. And Luckily, that created a huge media outrage, which was very fortunate for myself. And also after that, the courts have decided that this arrest was actually not justified. And that in January has also been confirmed by the Supreme Court of Italy. When we look into the reports of the um, International Panel on Climate, or on biodiversity, they say that we need transformative change of our socioeconomic systems. And they lay out actually quite exactly what that is and what is driving the destruction of the ecosystems and what is changing the climate. And that is first and foremost, the absolutely unsustainable amounts of consumption. And of course, if we look at the data, we can see that the poorer half of the world's planet just causes like 10% of the energy consumption, for example, and that in turn, the richest 10% of the planet are responsible for nearly all the energy and resource consumption on this planet. But we are living mainly in an economic system which is relying on growth. And we cannot continue to grow the economy on a finite planet. Technical improvements, for example, are also always um, put in the forefront of this argument, saying that if we just have better technology, then everything would become more efficient and we could just continue growing the economy. But if you look at the historic data, that has never worked. 
there never has been absolute decoupling of GDP growth from resource consumption. So we really have, I think, to look at the underlying problems of that, asking what is the economy for? What do people actually need? Are we striving to have something like the good life for all, possibilities for all people to have access to water, shelter, food, healthcare, and all these things? Or are we just aiming to grow the GDP? And I think there, this debate of what does prosperity mean really to a society, that is something which should be at the very, very forefront of the discussion when we look at what this transformative change, what the society needs to go through and what the scientists are very, very clear about that we absolutely need it. What does that look like? And that's the moment in history where we are we will have to change. And now is the moment where we can actually still choose how to do that. And this is, I think, also why we all have to engage with that. We can't just follow on um, down this path which has led us here to ecological destruction and also um, to the loss of lives of many people in the global south this way is not sustainable so we will have to change and that is the moment that we are in really if we really want to transform the system we really need to change the idea of single people leading something i think we need a much more participatory approach um, there is not going to be one way of changing. I think a lot of people will need to come up with their own ideas and start to move things. I think any leader at any time must be able to be replaced. That, for example, is something which in a system like a ship is always quite quite clear so you have one person who is responsible but if that person suffered from a sudden heart attack or whatever not there's always another person who could step into that role and take it up and i think we again we have this narrative of strong leadership coming from individual people that's how we look at history as well. But then nothing would have happened if there hadn't been all the people in the background who we have forgotten about. And I think if things in the future are really supposed to be different, we need a multitude of voices. We don't need that one heroic figure who we think is going to change or lead the change. We all need to be the change. We all need to do something. And that in itself is a revolution. And I think it's very culturally ingrained. That is, again, the question of hope. I think it's a very passive idea of hoping that something would change or hoping that there would be somebody else who would step up and lead the movement and do something. But I think there often just isn't. And the only person who can do it is you, as well as anyone else. Because all these people in leadership positions, they are all just people. They have all just started somewhere. They maybe got there by talent or by combination of chance and luck, but they're still at any point just people. So don't wait for anyone. If you wait longer, I think nothing at all will get done. Even if you don't do it perfectly, I think it's better to start doing something than just to wait for someone else to do it. We all have to do something. And that is the transformation I think we need. We all have to engage in changing and being part of the political system and not just as voters. A lot of the reasons why people have 
a hard time to change their habits is that human beings in general really like habits. They really just like to stick to the rules. They like to um, continue the things which they have been doing all along, which they learned as children from their parents. And that's how everyone builds their ideas about the life. And changing from that suddenly and seeing that all the things you have been told all your life are somehow wrong. Um, that is a really, really big step. And now at this particular moment in time when we really understand the predicament we are in, in terms of the climate and the ecosystem destruction, it's terrifying to look at those data and to think what that would mean for our future or for the future of children or what it does mean to people around the world. So you need to have a certain strength to confront that. And I think you also have to give yourself some opportunity to, to grieve, even if you're not losing maybe something right now. But I do think particularly young people, they lose a future they imagine they would have. You know, they had a certain perception of how the future would go. And that often comes from our parents, which experienced that all children always will be living better and be more well off than their parents. But in this situation, that is not true anymore. So these people lose, in a way, their idea of the future, what they saw would be their future. And that in itself is a quite uh, shocking thing and many people go into denial. They choose to ignore it because it's too hard. And then there are other people, of course, who understand, but they feel that they do not have the agency really to change something. They feel too small in the system. And I think that is an important point because it raises the question what a democracy should really be like. If we want this transformative change, we have to work at the power structures and fight for equality of each and every one in the society. We can't do one without the other. And that is also why racial equality is at the core of solving our environmental problems, because that is also um, a part of the system of othering, where we say that um, we belong to a certain group of people, white people in my case, and we are different from other peoples in the world, and it's okay for us to suppress them or to exploit them or to abuse them or have them work for uh, to lower working standards or for less money, which isn't enough to make a living and things like that. And the same is true if we speak about the environment because we feel um, separated from the environment. That is very different than the idea that many indigenous communities have about the natural world. They see themselves as part of a web of life and whatever they do to the environment, what we do to the environment comes back to us at some point. And that is also the moment where we are in, where a small group of the human population has put so many uh, CO2 and methane emissions into the atmosphere, has polluted the rivers, the soils, and all that, that now slowly everything is breaking up around us. And that we're losing biodiversity at a really, really rapid rate. We're in the sixth mass extinction as well. And if we lose all these species in this uh, web of life, we will, we will lose our livelihoods because we depend on the natural world. We are part of it. And that is quite in contrast to this typical Western idea of dualism and separation of humans having a dominion over any other non-human species on this planet. And there, if we want to change, we really need to go and discuss the values which uh, people and societies have.